I can see why they call them fidget cables. They're, uh, <laughs> they're pretty. So you might have noticed that uh, I've been off social media for a while now. This is why. Possibly the craziest smartphone gadgets video I've ever made. And the first product is actually my first car. It's a little smaller than I would have liked, but no less useful. You just screw in a smartphone holder, whack your phone in, and this allows you to film perfectly smooth video. And if you look here, you can actually adjust the angle of the wheels, which allows you to film different kinds of shots, like being able to circle around your subject all with one push. Did you know that Google has actually developed a project to start weaving technology into the things that you wear? This idea of taking ordinary day-to-day -day objects and just infusing a little bit of magic into them. They call it Jackart, and this is one of the first products to come out with it, the Connecti Smart Backpack. So if we actually try it on right now, you can see that this is a touch sensitive layer. So I can actually just swipe down to skip next, swipe up to go back and double tap to open the camera and take a timed selfie. There's a lot of different commands. You can set it up the way that you want it. Nothing that you couldn't do already with just your phone, but it just means that you don't have to keep taking it out and being distracted by it. Okay, now for a controller that I'm gonna be honest with you, absolutely floored me. On the face of it, yeah, it's a gaming controller. It's got nice hardware, it's got a grippy matte finish, it's got console quality buttons and really nice meaty triggers. But I would argue that the best part of this is a software that comes with it. What happens after you get the controller? For starters, the setup is instant. You just install the app and it's good to go. Providing the games that you're playing support controllers, the on-screen controls will be automatically mapped to these buttons. And you could just tell that they've put a lot of care into this. Animations are smooth. You can feel the phone subtly vibrate as you scroll. The app feels so polished that it's almost like an extension of the iOS I'm running it on. This is the best mobile game controller I've ever used. The only caveat is that it's iOS only. So I would love to see this come to Android too. Now, just before we get to the, the thick boy serious gadgets, got a couple of ones that are just cheap and cheerful but actually quite good. First up is the fidget cable with the tagline, finally, a fun, tidy, durable cable. I'd agree with all those things. There's a whole bunch of different configurations you can go for, but every one of them has the same soft, matte, high quality finish. It feels fantastic. And as far as the tidy part of that's concerned, every cable is laced with magnets. And this doesn't mean that you can just kind of drop it and it'll automatically wind itself up into a coil, but it does definitely make it a step above a normal cable in that once you have wound it up, it'll stay in place. Also, I can see why they call them fidget cables. They're, uh, they're very fun. Another simple one is the phone tether. You just place this tag on the inside of your case. And then from the outside, you link up this wrist strap and just never drop your phone again. It is like very, very secure. This is not going anywhere. And the side perk of this is that you can also use the included clip to stick it onto pretty much anything else. We've got a clever little phone stand here. It kind of looks ultra generic on the face of it, but it is surprisingly well thought out. It's got a two part design, which means that A, you can completely adjust the angle. B, you can fold over the second part to act as a stand in itself. Or C, you can use it as a clamp to clip around a desk, for example. It works in portrait, it works in landscape. It's just generally a good one to have if you're planning on doing a lot of plane or train traveling. You can keep your hands free. And finally, another one that falls into this uh, cheap and cheerful category is the three in one smart viewer. You just get your phone, drop it inside, and like magic, it'll start wirelessly charging and switching its speaker output from the normal small phone speakers to this much bigger unit on the back. It's about 50% louder. The main problem is just that, well, like most generic smartphone accessories, it's made with the iPhone in mind first, not the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra, which quite literally sticks out like a sore thumb. All right, now for the big guns. So you might remember a couple of episodes ago, I showed you a smartphone external monitor. Cool. A bit later, we had one that had a built-in battery, so you didn't need a mains connection. Even better. We then actually had one that combined that with the fact that it also had a 10-point capacitive touchscreen, just like on your phone. Fantastic. Well, this, the AirView, which arrived to me in this almost pre-deconstructed package, takes all of that and makes it wireless. Now, it's also meant to have MM Wave technology built inside of it, the same tech used by 5G to give no lag at all. But because this is a pre-production unit, mine doesn't. So I can't really say to you, yes, you should go out and buy this right now because I haven't tested the feature myself, but it might be one to keep an eye out for. However, on a similar note, there is something that I have managed to test properly and it's even cooler. 
We're talking about the Hyper Mirror, and it might just be one of a kind. It allows you to wirelessly project the contents of almost any device onto almost any display. You do have to plug a receiver into the screen and then plug a transmitter into your tech of choice, which is all a bit of a faff, but the result is worth it because this is by far the fastest, snappiest wireless screen projection I've ever used. The whole reason that you have to go through the faff of using their own transmitter and their own receiver is because this doesn't use Wi-Fi. This actually does use the MM Wave tech I just talked about. And the difference is night and day. It's so, so responsive. It's good enough to use on every tech product I tried it with. And if you are enjoying the video, by the way, a sub to the channel would be Sublime. Okay, now I've got a couple of power-related products that I want to show you. And each one is more extreme than the last. So first up is the Supertank Pro, which admittedly already sounds pretty extreme. It's a power bank, and it's just good at everything. It's compact, it's got a nice sturdy aluminium alloy body. It's got a huge 26,800 milliamp hour battery, four USB-C ports, two higher power ones for laptops, two lower power ones for phones and earphones. And overall, this thing can push a total output of 138 watts. So chances are that whatever you are gonna be charging with it will charge at full speed. Now the next level up from that is the Hypercube, a very strange looking contraption. And it's a whole bunch of things at once, but primarily a triple fast wireless charging station. But using a combination of these apparently patent pending hinges and some inbuilt magnets, it can fold itself into a cube, offering a clock, an alarm, an inbuilt speaker system for soothing sounds, a color changing LED panel to act as a wake up light or a reading light. And you'll notice that there's a little stand that flicks out from the wireless chargers on the side, and that allows you to still use them while it's like this. So that's kind of a lot, but it's actually made a little sweeter with the introduction of the Ampere Power Cube, which on its own is nothing to write home about. A pretty plain, no frills power bank, really. But the pins on top, they actually line up with the pins on the inside of the Hypercube and make it A, wireless, and B, portable. You can also change the color of this LED lamp here, but I gotta say one thing that I don't like about this is the capacitive controls on the alarm. They just feel super old school. Anyways, moving on. Chances are that your current smartphone charger probably has a power output of somewhere in between 18 and 30 watts. And so in past smartphone gadgets episodes, I've shown you chargers that go all the way up to 120. Well, that benchmark just keeps getting pushed further and further out because right here we have a pair of 200 watt chargers. The angle is this, Apple sells a 96 watt charging brick for $80. This is 85, but it can power four devices at once with a total power output of more than double. Plus it also just supports a lot of the standard smartphone charging protocols like Oppo VOOC Charge and Qualcomm Quick Charge. So it's more likely to be able to charge your phone at its maximum power. It's not giving you something that you can't achieve using multiple separate chargers, but this is a major decluttering tool. And now for the grandest power product, the stunning, the unbelievable, the Made in China. I don't know why this needed to be right on top. But actually what's inside this box is the most extreme power bank you've ever seen. Capacity? Check. It's got enough juice there to charge your phone 23 times over. And it's got a lot of ports. Four USB-A's, one USB-C port, one DC, one car charger port, and two full main sockets. And it can use them all at once. So to reiterate, you could charge nine devices simultaneously. Oh, and also, I keep forgetting how heavy this thing is. There's an LED light on the front. It's not the brightest, but it would do the job. But you know the coolest part of the entire thing is actually how it charges. They call it double helix charging. So for a lot of big power banks like this, they use either USB-C or DC input to charge. This can use both at the same time, which means it can charge flat in two and a half hours. Or well, for some perspective, that's less than the amount of time it would take an iPhone to charge just a couple of years ago. And this has the capacity of, you know, 23 iPhones. Now I've got a couple of gamer gadgets and these are gonna get increasingly weird. So first up is a quite affordable, but good gamepad. It gives you shoulder buttons up top and they're adjustable too. So you can position them wherever your heart desires. And there's no slipping around. The fit is, is quite firm, but the main differentiator is this. It's the fact that you have a medium sized fan blowing cold air onto the back of your phone with hot air leaving from the sides. If you don't like the idea of a full on bulky gamepad though, then these helmets, yes, 
Helmets are a surprisingly functional alternative. They're again, shoulder buttons to be able to aim and fire in-game, but they're just very well considered. You can either press the helmet itself or press the triggers behind them. Your choice depends on the size of your hands and whatever feels good to you. You get these little rings that hang off them to keep your other fingers in for extra grip, I guess. The helmets are internally hollowed so they don't start accidentally pushing buttons on your phone. And they're actually constructed of a zinc alloy. So they feel kind of nice. Now, if you thought that was odd, you're in for a bit of a treat with this next one. Finger gloves. I realize what it looks like, but this is a legitimate product. Little grips for each of your fingers to stop them skidding while playing games. But also, whose idea was this? Like, when was the last time you got beaten really badly in a game of COD and thought, you know what I really need? a pack of five contraceptives on my fingers. The only reason I actually ended up getting these was because I thought the product page was hilarious. Simple and handsome. Ultra thin attack, say goodbye to bloated. Eat chicken, walking position, artifact. I don't wanna be the one to tell them, but uh, they need a better translator. All right, I've saved two of the best value gadgets till the very end. So first up is the elegantly named Xiaomi Mi True Wireless Earphones Basic 2. Now, I was super excited about trying these out because the first basics were amazing, like proper bargain basement value true wireless earbuds. They were basic in every sense of the word, but the sound was fantastic for something like $20. The strategy is a little different this time. Xiaomi's bumped the price up to closer to $30, but then for that, they've tried to integrate a lot of the features you'd find in higher end earphones, like Bluetooth 5.0, auto pause upon removal. They've got USB type C, a longer battery life, bigger driver units for better sound. I will say though, they're kind of clunky looking. I'm not a huge fan of that. And also the bigger drivers haven't exactly led to better sound quality because instead of going inside your ears, like the last generation, these ones just kind of sit in front of them. So I would say that while these are still amazing value, they're not quite as good value as the first ones. But one product line that just doesn't stop improving is Xiaomi's Mi Bands. And the latest Mi Band 5 has carried that flag forward. The way that I would pitch this, if you're not someone who's into fitness bands and smartwatches, is just that this is one of the best value watches, full stop. For just over $30, it's a good quality, water-resistant digital watch with over 100 different faces to keep switching between. It just so happens that this watch can also do a thousand other things. It can keep track of your heart rate. It can tell you the quality of your sleep. It can control your music. It can count your steps. It can literally tell you how healthy you are versus other people of a similar gender and build to you. And it can do all of that while lasting at least a week on a charge. Also, guided meditation is a nice touch. You follow this breathing rhythm it gives you, and just one minute later, your heart rate will be slower, and it'll show you exactly how much by. All right, if you enjoyed this video, I've got a ton of other smartphone gadgets episodes, so I'll link them from here. My name is Aaron, this is Mr. Who's the Boss, and I'll catch you in the next one.